everybody, welcome to the Chaz Man Show. My name is Chaz Riddle and this is Monday, May the 6th. It's the day after Cinco de Mayo. So I guess it's Seis de Mayo? But anyhow, uh, I thought I'd do my video out here on the porch so you can hear the birds are singing and all that good stuff. Well, let's go over the weekend box office and then I've got a fan theory, it's my theory actually, about the Soul Stone, which might be controversial or you might get a kick out of, I don't know. Anyhow, starting with the fact that uh, in first position, no uh, big, uh, no big surprise. Uh, Endgame, Avengers Endgame, finished in the number one spot with 100 and uh, oh my goodness here, 145.8 million dollars in its second week. It did drop 59 points, point uh, to 59.2 percent, but that's no real surprise. Uh, most things do drop a little bit uh, on the second week, but the big thing is, is that now here's the big number, okay? Titanic came out in 1997 and was in the number two position behind Avatar. It had a worldwide gross of $2.187 billion. Well, Endgame right now is sitting at $2.188 billion. So it just passed Titanic. So James Cameron now is still in number one position with Avatar because it came out in 1997. To see uh, 2009, and it still has the worldwide with uh, 2.7 billion dollars. But on its heels, only after only two weekends now, Endgame is at two point. Uh, what would we say? 2.187. So it's just a matter of time if it can continue its role like it has been. It's showing right now in over 4,000 theaters, and I saw yesterday morning at 8 a.m. They were actually. Uh, movie times, uh, I live in Columbia here, and uh, they were movie times over at the mall at 8 a.m. for Endgame, and it was just pretty much round the clock until about, uh, I think, 11.30 was the last showing last night, and the first showing this morning was 10 o'clock, so, I mean, we have another big week for Endgame. However, uh, this weekend coming up, you know, you've got uh, Detective Pikachu coming around the corner, and so you've got a little bit of competition that's going to draw away from Endgame, but still... You know, as much as Endgame is done, it had you take things into consideration, okay? James Cameron put out uh, Titanic in 2009, and it's held at number one position. Now, that was a very unique movie. It wasn't part of uh, uh, any other thing that had been produced before. It's a one-and-done type thing, even though there are sequels in the works right now, and uh, we'll find out uh, about those December of 2020 when uh, James Cameron releases Avatar 2. At least that's what the last thing I read. It might be, ch it might change. You never know what Cameron's gonna do, what the distributorship's gonna do, but that's what I saw. But anyhow, as strong as Marvel is right now, they, it took them a culmination of 11 years and 22 movies to get into that number one spot with Endgame. Now, it crushed the box office last week with $357 million opening. It beat its uh, predecessor, Avengers Infinity War, by $100 million. That's a lot of cheese. That's a lot of cheddar cheese, according to Peter Quill. Yeah, but that's not why we do it, said Gamora. <laughs> Anyhow, look what that got her. Um, bottom, <laughs> bottom of that uh, Soul Stone thing with the red floaty guy, according to uh, Barton, you know, Hawkeye there. Uh, I loved how he lashed out at Thor and Endgame. He goes, if you don't like what I'm saying, go see the red floaty guy and you tell him that. He's like, oh, come on, dude. I know you're upset Black Widow's dead and everything, but... Uh, anyhow, I'll get to that in a second. Um, but anyway, let's finish off the top, uh, the top five movies because it's kind of interesting. You had three newcomers out there this week, but they still did not uh, do uh, very well considering they're up against Endgame. Um, okay, so... In the top five, Endgame won $45.8 million in its second week. And again, it had a drop of 59.2% from last week, which was, it's still gangbusters. It's still kicking butt out there. But we had the new one out there, The Intruder, which brought in $11 million. That's with Dennis Quaid. And uh, I really like Dennis Quaid. I wish he was in better movies. The last really good movie I, I saw him in, at least the one that I enjoyed the most, uh, was made into a mini series here recently. It, was, it had to do with the... Um, the, uh, the uh, Northern Lights, and it had uh, Jim Caviezel. And it was a time travel movie. Hmm. 
actually it really wasn't time travel so much as it was a time uh, that people could talk to each other through time through uh, the Aurora Borealis or uh, Aurora Borealis, uh, the Northern Lights there. And uh, the name of the movie actually escapes me right now, but it'll come back to me soon enough and I'll put a little, I'll post it there. Uh, you know, on uh, one of my little uh, screenshots or whatever it is, a uh, little graphic. But anyhow, that was the last uh, Dennis Quaid movie I really liked. But I also liked his other movies. I mean, uh, Inner Space, that was, an, that was a great one. That's when Meg Ryan was still cute. Remember that? Her and him and uh, Martin Short. But anyhow, I digress. Okay, uh, back to the uh, top five. Long Shot, which is the rom-com with uh, Charlize uh, Theron. And... Everybody says her last name wrong, but I watched her in an interview one time, and she says, my name is Theron. Kind of like Sharon. It rhymes with Sharon, so that's how you pronounce my last name, is Theron. So anyhow, Charlie's Theron. Uh, they brought, they came into the number three position. Um, that was uh, $10 million, and that's the Seth, Seth, uh, what the hell is his last name? I don't know, the, the guy with the burly laugh. <laughs> Seth Rogen. Okay, so that's number three position. Ugly Dolls, which is the animated movie, it has uh, the voices of uh, Blake and uh, Kelly from The Voice, which is kind of uh, coincidental, or is it ironic? No, it's coincidental. Um, but that's uh, an animated tale that came in with $8.5 million. And then Captain Marvel, still in the top five this week with $4.2 million, kind of cashing in on that Marvel wave, and I think that's pretty awesome, you know. Um, it's also in the Billion Dollar Club. Um, and just want to give a shout uh, real quick to number eight position is Shazam with 2.4 million dollars this weekend uh, domestically now at 135 million dollars and worldwide 355 million dollars. So anyhow, there you go. Uh, Endgame came out on April 26. It's been out for two weeks. It's at uh, the number two position worldwide of all movies out there right now, just behind Avatar. So I guess the, 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 the real thing is right now is will Avatar, since it's been absent since 2009, when it comes out with its sequel in 2020, will it go ahead and re regain that top one position? Well, you know, um, it worked for Star Wars because Star Wars hadn't put a movie out there in quite a while. And when, uh, you know, when it came back out around The Force Awakens, it was uh, the number one at the box office for a long, long, long time and into that billion dollar club. So sometimes the absence does make the heart grow fonder. But anyhow, on to my fan theory. Okay. Everybody's wondering at this point how Captain America got that soul stone back to uh, Red Skull there on Vormir. Well, here's my theory. Because everybody thinks that Steve went back in time and they, uh, they showed that, that uh, last scene where he's dancing with, he finally gets his wonderful dance with Peggy Carter. Well, here's the thing. What happens? Here's my here's my stinking thinking. Maybe maybe Peggy Carter was a real witch to live with. Maybe after all those years of pining for, I mean, this was the first girlfriend Steve Rogers ever had. Maybe it turns out she wasn't such a nice person. I mean, the first time we meet her, she punches that guy in the jaw there when he's standing online there at uh, at Camp Lehigh uh, during basic training. You know, and if it wasn't for Tommy Lee Jones snapping her into place, she, she might have hit him again. Who knows? And then. She gets pissed off at Steve, and uh, he picks up his shield after he becomes Captain America. And he goes, hey, how's his shield look? And she shoots at him. She drops like four or five rounds into his shield. Thank goodness it's made of vibranium, so it didn't, you know, it didn't bounce off and kill him. But maybe she's a real bitch to live with, you know? So here's my theory. So let's say that, um, okay, Steve went back in time, hooked up with Peggy Carter, found out she really wasn't worth, you know... It's better to keep her in the idealized state rather than to actually live with her. But he did have five years, five years after the snapping, that he was going back to Avengers Compound. And who did he see there? Who was there? Yep, the Black Widow. Right? Now, he already had two years on the land with her. He was living, uh, who knows where, Wakanda or, or according to, um, according to uh, Sam, uh, you know, he said uh, they weren't staying in the, you know, not all the places they stayed in after Civil War were five-star hotels. So as far as we know, 
And then, of course, you know, when Bruce comes out from uh, back of the uh, lab there, uh, in the beginning of Infinity Wars, he says, hey, I'm back. And then, you know, of course, uh, Sam looks at uh, Vision and Wanda and goes, well, oh, this is awkward. Hmm, does Sam let us know that maybe Captain Rogers and Black Widow were hooking up for those two years? And then additional five years after the snapping? You know, I mean, that makes more sense. I mean, he only had a few months with Peggy Carter as, uh, you know, you know, basic training and then going off to war, you know, actually becoming Captain America and getting the super serum and all that good stuff. And then he went down in the ice in 45. But, uh, you know, pining for somebody and actually being with them is two different things. Sometimes it's better to keep somebody in that, uh, on that perch, you know, that idealized state. So I'm thinking he went back. After he realized Peggy was kind of a, not a bitch uh, or a bitch to live with, not the ideal woman. I mean, she's the ideal woman, but not the ideal person to live with. Let's say he said, you know, I got still got this soul stone. I'll go back to Vermeer, give it to the Red Skull. He'll bring, um, you know, soul for a soul. He'll bring Black Widow back to life and we'll live that happy life. Because when Sam asked him at the end of uh, Endgame, um, you know, after he sees the, the wedding ring, you want to tell me about the girl? And uh, Captain Rogers is like, no, I don't think I will. So, was it that storybook ending that everybody thinks about? My theory is no. I think he hooked up with Black Widow for two years after Civil War, and I think he hooked up with her for another five years after the snapping. And when he realized Peggy Carter was a bitch, he says, hey, you know what, red floaty guy, here's the Soul Stone, bring back Black Widow, boom, slam, bam. And he hooked up with her, and he didn't tell anybody about it. Okay? Because we know that Black Widow comes back to life, right? There's already a movie. They're starting filming that next next month. So, which Black Widow is it? Now, I know that's kind of a far-fetched theory, but it's also a theory based on, you know, having relationships and, you know, dealing with people. Sometimes uh, having that idol up in there in your crosshairs uh, is one thing, but living with them is another. Okay? Take it from people that have lived with me. <laughs> I'm not the easiest guy to get along with. So anyhow, that's <laughs> that's my theory about Black Widow and Captain America. And for what it's worth, that might get you that and a couple bucks to give you a, get you a cup of coffee at Starbucks. But anyhow, guys, uh, this is my video for the week, uh, May the 6th. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, as always, please leave a like or a comment or a question at the bottom there. Uh, you know, let me let me know what you're thinking about my theory. And uh, get back to me, and I'll look out, or leave a comment, and I'll get back to you, I promise. Let's build this readership up, guys, okay? And thanks again for everybody that watched my video last time on the, um, the spoiler uh, review of uh, Avengers, because that got uh, over 100 likes, and I thought that was pretty damn good. So uh, at one point in, uh, in the next few years, uh, 1,000 likes will be the goal on a daily basis. And then 10,000 likes on a daily basis. But that's, you know, we got to start somewhere, guys. So thanks for sticking with me. Hit that uh, button right now so you like this video. Subscribe and uh, ring that bell uh, so that uh, you'll get all the alerts from future videos. Now, I will be going off to New York in a couple of days for a few days on a, a TV show. But I'll try to do a video from there. I won't, uh, I won't allude or I won't tell you where I am because I'm not allowed to. But... I will be posting a video if I get the chance, and hopefully I will. So anyhow, guys, you have a great day. Have a great week. Enjoy this wonderful weather out here. It's fantastic. You can hear the traffic falling, blowing, uh, flowing by my house. And, uh, hey, I kept the red theme in the background, so that's kind of cool. you gotta, you got to stay consistent. Anyhow, guys, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.